I want to start off by saying congratulations to the Fedora Onyx team. As of Fedora 39, Onyx is going to become an official immutable OS tree image variant, whichever term you want to use, of Fedora. Basically, Fedora Silverblue, the immutable version of Fedora, but instead of using GNOME as the desktop, it's using the budgie desktop instead. But that got me thinking, what's up with these really weird names for Fedora images? We have Silverblue, which is GNOME. We have Kina White, KDE. We have Onyx for Budgie, Seracia for Sway, and then there's unofficial images like Voxite for XFCE, and Bazit, which is like a SteamOS kind of replacement. Why? Why are these the names? Before we can tackle the variants, we need to tackle the core, Fedora Silverblue, which if it didn't exist, the others just probably wouldn't either. But here's the fun thing about Silverblue. Even though you've probably only been hearing about it for a couple of years, the project is a lot older than you might expect, because Silverblue is actually just a rebrand of an older Fedora project, Fedora Atomic Workstation. The Atomic branding has been around for a very long time, first being introduced with Fedora 21, and stuck around for quite a while as well but nowadays has been phased out and succeeded by another project, Fedora CoreOS. And the workstation part of the name comes from the fact that Fedora Atomic Workstation is capable of all of the same things that regular Fedora Workstation can do. So it's the atomic version of the workstation. The branding was very simple and very straight to the point. One might argue a little bit too straight to the point. It felt a little bit rigid, a little bit stiff. It felt like there wasn't any flavor to it. It's just, this is exactly what it is, and that's the end of it. Which is fine if you understand what OS3 is, you understand what an atomic desktop is, and why this might be beneficial, but it makes it really hard to market outside of the Fedora project. So, after much deliberation, that's how we eventually got to this change right here. Changes, Silverblue. Rename Atomic Workstation to Silverblue. The Atomic Workstation is being rebranded to Fedora Silverblue to give this project more visibility and realize its full potential for bringing new users to Fedora. There is a new website, www.teamsilverblue.org, which is gathering information and resources around this effort. The Atomic Workstation has been an undercover effort. It wasn't intentionally undercover, it's just no one cared about Atomic Workstation so far that was created as a byproduct of Project Atomic. But it was not widely known. The name change and the new website are aiming to make this workstation variant more prominent. The Atomic variant is better suited for some use cases than the traditional workstation and will make Fedora more attractive for those users. And clearly, this assumption was correct. Over the past couple of years, a lot of people just out of nowhere started using Silverblue and gave it an honest try as something different from regular Fedora. It certainly doesn't hurt that over the years, flat packs have become more and more available. And nowadays, we also have things like DistroBox, meaning you can run something like Silverblue and gain access to every piece of software on every distro out there. And this change was made with Fedora 29. Once the rebrand happened, nobody even realized that Atomic Workstation was a thing. The project is Silverblue, and that's pretty much the end of it. Now, as for the name Silverblue, you might be wondering what it means. Not much. It was chosen after roughly two months when the project previously known as Atomic Workstation was rebranded. There were over 150 words or word combinations reviewed in the process. In the end, Silverblue was chosen because it had an available domain as well as the social network accounts. But it also wasn't the original planned name. There's a reason why the logo kind of looks like a leaf. This logo was made before the final name was accepted. The name they were going to go with was called Silver Leaf, but it didn't really work out. 
but they still like the logo, and you could say that Silver Blue is a new leaf on Fedora's OS tree. So, you know, they fit it in there somehow. So, you're probably thinking now, okay, the rest of the names are meaningless. Wait, that's not the case. The other names do have some logic behind them. So, the next official variant is Fedora Kina White, the KDE version, and this is what started the trend. But what exactly is Kina White? This right here is Kina White. It is a light blue copper silicate mineral, and if you ask me, I think it looks pretty good. But what in the world does it have to do with KDE? Well, luckily, the FAQ outlines exactly this question. KDE projects traditionally start with a K. Think Kden Live, Kwin, and things like this. Kinoite is a blue mineral, thus referring to both the silver and blue part of silver blue and the blue color of the KDE logo. I don't know how it being blue refers to both silver and blue. I guess you could say there are silver elements in here as well, but that's a really weirdly written phrase. And also, Kinoite means there is a tree in Japanese and they link to Google Translate. Now, the fun thing about going to this page is it actually um, doesn't give you Japanese. It sends you to Greek. So, uh, good job, guys. You probably should have included like a screenshot or something. Uh, thus referring to the tree in OS tree. Basically, you have this 2000 IQ logic behind naming it Kinoite that nobody would ever guess outside of going and reading the FAQ. And a lot of projects didn't guess the logic. So this is Voxite and this is Bazit. Voxite is a phosphate mineral and it's blue in a certain way. And Bazit is a beryllium scandium cyclosilicate, which I probably said completely wrong, mineral. Okay, so we got that far, but Bazit does not start with the name of the desktop they're using, and Voxite certainly doesn't start with an X. It does have an X in the word, so at least they made a, you know, that connection just in the wrong spot. What I think they did with their naming is ignored the rest of it and instead made it match with the ITE. Voxite, ITE, Bazit, ITE, and also made it blue. And this is Onyx, which is not blue and does not end in ITE, but it is a silicate mineral. I guess technically, okay, technically, if you make blue dark enough, it becomes black. But I don't think that's what they were going for. They just picked a mineral that sounds cool and went with it. But what about Ceracea? This is not a mineral. In fact, it's not even a rock, it's a tree. Well, much like with silver leaf to silver blue, this was not the first name they were going to go with. That would have been sodalite, which is blue and is a tectosilicate mineral and also ends in ITE. And if everything went well, it would have worked really nicely. The problem though, is there was already a project called sodalite and it wasn't just a random project out there. It was an image for Fedora using the Pantheon desktop. Instead of finding another mineral that could have possibly fit the name, instead what they did is came up with some more 2000 IQ logic. Ceracea starts with S like sway. Fair enough, makes sense. Terminala Ceracea, which is the full name of the tree, is a tree, so is OS tree. Fair enough. Terminala Ceracea is also known, here we go, as Silver Leaf, Silver Cluster Leaf, and various other names. Silver Leaf was one of the top contenders for the project name of what became Fedora Silver Blue. Context you wouldn't have unless you knew about the original name. And if you stare at Terminala Ceracea for a while, you'll eventually start noticing similarities with the Sway logo. Do you know why that is? It's because it's a tree. Unlike other naming schemes we've looked at in the past, like the old Fedora naming, like the Ubuntu naming, in this case, there's not really a naming scheme. You have Kinoite that sort of started the trend, and then a lot of other projects kind of liked the trend and just kept going with it. If there happens to be another variant which is really well run, that is really popular, and eventually tries to become an official variant, 
it doesn't really matter that the naming doesn't line up with Kena White, it's just a thing that occurred naturally. But not everyone is a fan of this style of naming. Naming on OS tree based variants. This topic has been discussed in other threads like trademark approval request for Swayspin, but not clearly defined. My opinion is that we, the Fedora Project, should define a name like Spin or Labs to these variants or finally decide if we're going to put all under a unique name like Solutions. The idea that we have Silverblue, Kena White, and there are things like Voxite, and at the time Seracia had not become official, and then now we have Budgie, it's like you have all of these things. They're all clearly Fedora, but there's no indication that they're actually related to each other whatsoever. Obviously, the projects that are unofficial you can't really do anything with, but the official projects, maybe a better naming scheme would be beneficial. Some people have suggested using the Silverblue name, so Fedora Silverblue Gnome, Fedora Silverblue KDE, Fedora Silverblue Sway, and things like that. Others have suggested using Immutable instead, but some people maybe bringing back the Atomic branding would be a good idea. This is the old branding they used to use for the workstation and various other projects, but maybe they could revive it for this particular installation. It would be Fedora Atomic Gnome, Fedora Atomic KDE, so on and so forth. But by doing this, basically they would do a full circle back to the original naming scheme. But I guess maybe it's a bit different now because people actually recognize the name Silverblue. It's not this little project that no one is using. As it stands though, this is just a discussion on the Fedora project forums. Yes, people involved like high up in Fedora are getting involved in the discussion, but even so, nothing has been decided, nothing is being done. As it stands, the naming is what it is, but maybe in the future we'll see something like Fedora Atomic Budgie and things like that. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did you know about how the images were being named? Did you think they were just random names? Did you see there was a bit of a pattern? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrub, Silly Barra Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... I'm out.